Hello everyone, welcome to Shunya IS and welcome to this lecture. From today onwards, we are going to start a very important series for your prelims 2024. We are going to cover all the syllabus of prelims examination through MCQs, that is multiple choice questions, in the same way that they appear in the examination right so this is going to be a revolutionary series and why i am saying this is because see the examination pattern of upsc has changed a lot we all know that right especially since the year 2023 which is just this year in which you are seeing this uh, video since 2023, we have gotten a big shock regarding the kind of options that UPSC has started giving. And because of the kind of options that UPSC has started giving, you need to expand your knowledge, right? You need to make your knowledge very comprehensive. That is what you need to do. Right, that is your responsibility as a student. Now, please understand this that there is one way which is a way of studying wherein you read the books, then you try to recall, right? Then you try to apply it in your test series, right? This is the standard way in which most people try to cover their syllabus, but this way does not work. Why? Why it does not work? Because, see, our concentration spans have reduced. You know? There's no doubt about it that concentration span has reduced. There are a lot of distractions and there are a lot of ways in which uh, you can actually end up being distracted. So, all of that has reduced. This is why you need to now trick your brain. You need to Trick your brain. If your brain is saying that you need to open social media, you need to talk to friends, you need to talk to, you know, you need to just pass your time, etc. You need to trick your brain. And how will you trick your brain? You constantly release dopamine for your brain. How? Through already getting into the process of question solving. See, because whenever you get a question right, dopamine gets released in your mind because you know you have done something good. You know you, know you have done something worthy. So our model in these videos and in the course that uh, we are launching, that is revise uh, through MCQs, revise for pre uh, prelims through MCQs, we are going to reward, constantly focus on rewarding your knowledge constantly focus on rewarding your preparation through these videos so how the flow of these videos will go on the flow will be something like this that the question slide i will show the question slide to you you will pause the particular uh, question slide for a few seconds and by few seconds i mean not more than 20 to 30 seconds for any question I am saying, right? Not more than 20 to 30 seconds for any question because see, try to understand that here you are solving the question in a non-pressure environment. In your examination, you will be solving it in a pressure environment and you need to be very well versed with the pressures. So, when you see the question slide, you pause, you Pause your video, get a stopwatch with you or use your phone as a stopwatch. That is up to you if you can stay away from the distraction of your phone. So pause the video for about maximum 30 seconds. In the 30 seconds, you have uh, solved the question. Then play the video. I will discuss the answer immediately as the question ends. But I will expect that you will actually end up... Um, solving the question at your own end because if you don't do that there is no point of actually watching these videos fine so this is how these videos will be going on 
if you want to make handwritten notes if you wish to make handwritten notes you can make handwritten notes fine if you don't want to make handwritten notes and you want that the solve pdf should be given to you uh, you can go for the course that we have released for which these videos uh, are being posted right revise for your prelims through your mcqs fine we'll talk about the course at the end we are starting this playlist we are starting this practice through the most important subject of your examination which is the indian polity and indian polity will be covered through the index of m lakshmi kant right so the schedule of this particular uh, lecture series will be the index of m lakshmi kant so today we start with the topic of historical background as you can see we start with historical background the next video we will be going on according to the uh, index of this particular book that is m lakshmi kant fine that is there now let's see i hope the whole particular uh, flow of this course is clear to you it is going to be very beneficial especially for people who are working aspirants who are not able to give that kind of time to preparation and they want to constantly test themselves i will try to keep these videos as short as possible including the including the explanations including the definitions however the basic def uh, definitions and the basic descriptions and the basic revision will be happening in this class fine so you can make handwritten notes or you can go for the course that is all up to you so now we are actually starting so just ready your stopwatch ready your notes if you wish to your blank pages and uh, i will be showing you the question i'll be reading the question showing you the question and then pausing it fine this is the first question consider the following statements about the regulating act of 1773 the act established the governor of bengal as the governor general of bengal annual elections of 24 directors were replaced by the election of six judges a year the act granted the governor general veto power over the decisions of his council and the act raised the qualifications for voting in company elections from 500 to 1000 how many of the above statements are correct only one only two only three all four please pause the video so that you can think about it because this are the these are the starting slides these are the starting videos so i'm just taking it a little slow so that you can get used to it okay now that you have paused it and you are uh, towards the answer let me tell you the answer for this is only three statements are correct that means three out of the four statements here are correct that means one statement is wrong which one is wrong it is this third statement the act granted the governor general a veto power over the decisions of his council now please understand a few things i completely understand that this is a difficult question because these are not the facts that you remember in m lakshmi kant so i completely understand that but please try to stick with it and understand first of all logical guessing will not help you because this statement i can tell you you can eliminate through logical guessing how see the regulating act of 1773 the purpose what was the purpose of regulating act the purpose was to arrest the corruption right the society uh, the east india administration had gone very corrupt private trading was happening and that is why corruption so when corruption needs to be addressed there is no way that veto power would be granted to the governor general who at that point was warren hastings who himself was accused of corruption fine so that is why this statement is supposed to be rejected however these three are not statements which are given in m lakshmi kant so i understand 
that they are not something you will be well aware of. So let me just decode it for you. See, you need to remember these things because the nature of examination has become such that you need to remember such stuff now. The act established governor of Bengal as governor general of Bengal. This statement is given in Lakshmi Gang. So this you must be knowing. Annual elections of 24 directors were replaced by the election of 6 judges a year. This is also correct. Directors are in terms of your, um, your uh, company. That is the East India Company. And 6 judges. The elections of six judges, this is in terms of governor general in council. So, please understand that this particular, um, this particular fact needs to be remembered that earlier there was annual election for 24 directors and it was replaced for election of six judges a year. Then third, I have already told you it is a wrong statement. And fourth, the act raised the qualification for voting in company elections from 500 to 1000 euros is actually correct. This is also something which is not there in your M. Lakshmi Kant and you need to remember it. Now, now that we are talking about M. Lakshmi Kant, let us quickly revise the Regulating Act of 1773. The first thing you say along with me, an institution was set up by the Regulating Act of 1773, which was the Supreme Court at Calcutta. Fine. So, Supreme Court at Calcutta was established. This you need to remember. Another thing that you need to remember very thoroughly is that the Madras and the Bombay presidencies were made subordinate to the Calcutta presidency, that is the Bengal presidency. Fine. So, Bengal was given that kind of overarching influence that the Madras and Bombay presidencies were deemed inferior, that way subordinate. Then, a very important thing which was directly targeting Corruption when it comes to the workers of the company, the officers, is that private trading was banned. Right? And why was this banned? There is a proper reasoning to it because the people, the officers were having immense profits and there was a lot of pressure on the British administration to actually share these profits and give other companies also the chance to trade with India. And that is why private trading of these particular officers were stopped so that uh, there can be popular support. Then, along with designating the Governor General of, uh, the Governor of Bengal into Governor General of Bengal, he was also provided a governor general in council which had four members. Right? It had four members. You need to remember this number. That is four members. You should not be forgetting this number. The governor general in council had four members. So, there were total five members in governor general in council. That is four plus the governor general himself. Okay? So, Regulating Act of 1773, I hope you will remember, very important and somewhere or the other a question can come which will be asked out of this act. Next, next important act when we talk about the administration is the Pitts India Act. So, here look at the question in case you are watching this video while walking or while, uh, you know, uh, you're doing your chores or anything. I will read this question for you as well. With reference to Pitts India Act of 1784, consider the following statements. The Pitts India Act established a system of dual government in India with equal authority given to British Crown and the British East India Company. Then, the Act reduced the Governor General's Council to two members. 
द एक्ट वॉज नेम्ड आफ्टर विलियम पिट द एल्डर एंड द एक्ट गेव द गवर्नर जनरल द राइट टू ओवर राइड डिसीजन मेड बाय द कंपनी हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ऑल थ्री और नन ऑफ दी अब पॉज द वीडियो एंड थिंक अबाउट द आंसर okay now that you have had the time to solve this particular question let me solve it for you again this was a moderate to difficult question because there are some statements which you would not be finding in m lakshmi kant so here the answer is only one statement is correct see break down the statements one by one and there is just one statement wherein you will not be aware of what the answer is that is statement number 3 and i would agree to the fact that it is a very factual statement to be given but the nature of examination is becoming such that even factual knowledge is important so when we talk about statement 3 the act was not named after william pitt the elder it was named after william pitt the younger okay very factual statement i know but then sometimes you need to be ready with all your armor so the third statement becomes incorrect the pits india act established a system of dual government in india yahan tak theek hai till here it is correct but it did not give equal authority to the british crown and the british east india company because the crown was in every way supreme to the east india company in fact the pits india act was the act wherein first time the east india companies possession in india were called british possessions in india it is just like saying that a company like tata or ambani go to a company uh, go to a particular country they attain some property over there and that property comes to be known as indian properties just like that right so it becomes very important so the second half of this statement makes this statement incorrect then this is also factual but this is there in your m lakshmi kant the act reduced the governor general council to two members no it is three members so earlier it was actually 4 plus 1 by the regulating act 1773 by the pits india act it became 2 plus 1 okay and the fourth statement is absolutely correct so third uh, second statement also becomes wrong fourth is correct the act gave the governor general the right to override decisions made by the company this is absolutely correct and governor general in so many ways became the agent of the east uh, of the british government see please try to understand the chronological aspects also eventually after warren hastings it was cornwallis who became the governor general and who was cornwallis cornwallis was the one who led the british forces in american revolution fine and though britain lost the american revolution cornwallis was still a hero right so now you will see eventually that the governor general in council will keep on giving immense powers to the governor general himself because the governor general was cornwallis and eventually as you move forward as well the governor general keeps on being important okay eventually the governor general of bengal is also converted into governor general of india by which act think about it pause the video if you know the answer comment in the comment section right chalo so here the answer becomes only one statement is correct and regarding the pits india act what you need to remember is it created a dual government now when we talk about dual government please don't confuse it with diarchy dual government is different from diarchy dual government means there are two sets of rulers right so one is the east india company 
and one is the british government fine the east india company has court of directors okay there is court of directors which is created by the pits india company is a company so it will have directors the british government is being represented by board of control right so it's a government it needs to control so board of control this is dual government structure created by 1784 in history we will study in modern history that in history there have been another incidents where dual government has been created just think about where it was it was by treaty of allahabad if you remember treaty of allahabad 1764 that is before this entire law making process started wherein the diwani rights that is the revenue rights were with the british were with the east india company and the nizamat rights that is the law making rights were with the nawab of bengal okay that we will study in modern history so here the answer is only one statement is correct and i understand that the options will make it feel that it is very very difficult but please don't get demotivated you need to get motivated because upsc is now turning into a ruthless body it is not concerned with the the amount of preparation the amount of tests you have given it is concerned with how well you are read how well you have revised how well you have presented yourself so upsc is ruthless ruthless we have to be ruthless in our preparation as well moving on to the next question consider the following statements regarding charter act of 1813 charter act of 1813 statement 1 the charter act of 1813 gave christian missionaries permission to enter india and preach their religion that is statement 1 the statement 2 says charter act of 1813 appointed a bishop to lead the church supported by indian tax money which of the following is correct in respect to above statements so there are a b c and d options right just read the options and see which one is correct okay now here it is a moderate question where you have to apply some sort of your uh, existing knowledge and extrapolate that knowledge to arrive at the answer see first statement you all know is correct the charter act of 1813 gave christian missionaries permission to enter india and preach their religion this is absolutely correct which effectively reduces us to three options right now statement 2 the act appointed a bishop to lead the church supported by indian tax money you will not be aware of this fact because it is not there in lakshmikant but it is actually true it could be a generic statement right it could be a generic statement because they were uh, they were actually allowing the christian missionaries so they allowed the bishop to lead the lead the church and supported them by indian tax money pretty much possible so if you take that leap of faith you are able to reduce this one now you are left with two options that this one is the reason for this uh, explanation for this or this one is not the explanation of this if you have shown this much courage you can show some amount of common sense also because this statement is definitely not an explanation of statement number 1 right it can be a corollary it can be um something that follows the first statement or even for that matter the first statement explains the second statement but the second statement does not explain the first statement so b becomes incorrect uh sorry a becomes incorrect and uh, b becomes the correct answer right because how b becomes the correct answer is because both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct they are correct 
and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. So, the only courage that you have to show in this particular question is to assume somehow that the second statement is correct. Fine. And now that you have attended this session, you know that second statement is actually correct. Let us now revise a small aspect of this particular act, which very important act when it comes to Indian history. So, in this act, what we witnessed was that apart from allowing Christian missionaries, the British government put across 1 lakh rupees for Indian education. Right? The British government put forward, put aside 1 lakh rupees for Indian education. However, that money was uh, not spent also. So, that means it was just a formality that was happening. But uh, nevertheless, there were 1 lakh rupees which were set aside. Another very important thing that happened was the monopoly of East India Company was ended in the commercial aspects apart from two aspects. One of them was tea trade and one of them was trade with China. So, apart from tea trade and trade with China, the monopoly of East India Company was ended. Why was it ended? The same reason which I told you earlier because other companies were trying to get profits which the East India Company was getting and they were pressurizing the British government to give, give them the chance to actually earn that kind of money that the East India Company was making. And that is why the, uh, the British government had to resort to this particular ending of the monopoly. So, this becomes very important as well. Another very important aspect which you need to remember and you can use this in a question that you get about uh, local taxation also and local governments that it allowed the local governments to impose taxes. It allowed the local governments to impose taxes on the people. So, it was slowly empowering the people, right? Here also, please do remember that it was education of the Indians but it was Western education. So, your UPSC can also ask you that was it native language education or was it Western education? It was Western education that 1 lakh rupees were set aside for. So, Charter Act of 1813 is extremely important and I hope you will remember. Moving on to the next question. Regarding the Charter Act of 1853, which of the following statements is correct? The act allowed Indian representation in the legislative council. It established separate provinces for Sindh and Punjab. It reduced the number of members of the board of directors from 24 to 18. And it granted the governor general the authority to make legislative proposals without the need for assent. Which of the given statements are correct? Only one, only two, only three, all four. Pause this and please think about it. Okay. Now here, Okay, here you need to understand that it is again a moderate to difficult question. Some facts you might not be knowing very correctly. So, let me just make it very understandable for you. See, Charter Act of 1853 is an act, is the last of the Charter Acts in fact for that matter before the revolt of 1857, right? Right? Before the revolt of 1857, the Charter Act of 1853 is, uh, is enacted and it is very clear that there is some kind of disgruntledness among the people of India against the 
British Raj. So here, slowly you will see that the British will tighten their hold over Indians also and give them some aspect of representation as well. But the Indian representation in legislative council aspect is incorrect. Where were the Indians? Uh, where were the uh, Indians actually allowed that way? Indians were allowed in the imperial civil services by open competition. ऐसा भी नहीं है कि Indians were directly, you know, welcomed into the civil services. No, but civil services by this particular Charter Act of 1853 was opened up for open competition, and this particular, uh, this particular proposal was given in the Charter Act of 1833 under William Bentinck. but it could not happen right the second statement is correct it created separate provinces for sindh and punjab so this statement is absolutely correct even the third statement is correct it reduced the number of members on the board of directors this is the same board of directors that has been created by the pitts india act 1784 please keep on making linkages right and so this is correct it granted the governor general the authority to make legislative proposals without the need to assent see it is not that the governor general had any authority to make legislative proposals however the governor general definitely had veto powers through this act right it had veto powers through this act and that is why this act becomes important right so here the uh, fourth statement becomes incorrect now regarding the charter act of 1833 let us now revise and memorize some of the things regarding the charter act which are very very important see first of all when it comes to charter act of 1853 we will be seeing that it is the last of the charter acts and that is why you are seeing gradually indians are coming up the indian central legislative council the indian central legislative council is being set up by this particular act and what this means is that the function of execution and legislation which was earlier with the governor general in council both these functions were with the governor general in council they are now being separated so the legislative function is being given to the indian central legislative council which was also called a mini parliament right and the executive function is there with the governor general in council so if you get a question let's say in the civil services prelims that which of the following acts began the principle of separation of powers in indian history then you have to choose this charter act of 1853 because upsc's nature is now such that it is asking uh, application based questions right so application based questions very very important that you are able to make those kind of linkages then another very important and crucial thing was that in earlier charter acts be it 1813 beat 1793 be it your uh, 1833 always the monopoly and the rule the rule of the east india company was extended by 20 years that means for 20 years the rule of east india company could not go anywhere hai na but in this charter act of 1853 the rule of east india company was extended without giving a time period it was extended indefinitely that means there was no definite time period till which the east india company can 
rule and habits overall uh, governance way the commercial functions had already ended that way right the monopoly had ended in charter act of 1833 the complete monopoly even tea with uh, tea and china trade also but here because there was so much of resentment right because there was so much of resentment among indians that was the reason that the british government actually extended it indefinitely did not give any particular time period till which this extension is going to happen so here the first statement is incorrect it did not allow the indian representation in legislative council it did allow open competition for civil services definitely then separate provinces for sindh and punjab yes reduce the number of members on board of directors from 24 to 18 yes and granted the governor general authority to make legislative proposals without the need for assent no in fact governor general had the duty and the veto power to assent to all the bills that were asked right moving on next question with reference to the government of india act 1919 consider the following statements government of india act so now we are past the government of india act 1858 we are past the uh the councils act of uh, this 1861 then 92 and overall 1909 so we are in the montague uh, chelmsford reform so please pay attention under the government of india act consider the following statements under the provincial government subjects were divided into reserved and transferred lists the governor was responsible for subjects under the reserved list the second statement the ministers responsible for subjects under the transferred list were elected by the legislature and the third one the executive councillors were accountable to the legislative council how many of the of the above statements are correct only one only two all three or none take your time and see what is the answer to this one okay so now that you have paused and you have come back to it let's just discuss this see it is a very important reform that has happened in indian history that is the you call it the montague chelmsford reform and whenever you have these kind of beat morley minto or montague chelmsford the first name is the name of the secretary of state the second name is the name of the viceroy or governor general of india okay so in case you get a question in your prelims you cannot remember the viceroy and some kind of that question is asked you can use this trick okay so the biggest feature of the government of india act of 1919 was it introduced diarchy at the provincial level and now i would like to make a distinction between diarchy and dual government see dual government may you have made two centers of power in diarchy you have devolved the subjects into two lists right so one is the reserved list and this is at the provincial level so today like we have states uh we used to have provinces in fact pakistan still has the concept of provinces so reserved and transferred subjects and you have had questions from this in your upsc prelims that which one were the reserved subjects which one were the transferred subjects etc so the reverse uh, uh, reserved uh, subjects they were to be exercised by the viceroy they were to be exercised by the viceroy uh by uh, with the aid of the ministers and the transferred subjects the transferred subjects overall could be exercised by the governor of the province with the help of council of ministers that was created 
governor with the help of council of ministers that was created fine what was the impact of this that the more important subjects were of course reserved for the viceroy and the less important subjects like the local government etc they were in the transferred list so i hope that is clear that diarchy was introduced in the on the provincial level not on the central level some subjects of the uh, province they were with the provincial ministers only and some were with the viceroy so the first statement that is why becomes correct now here there can be a slight um, slight uh, confusion first of all the confusion should be the governor was responsible so whether this is governor of uh, um india the governor general of india or the governor of that particular province so here it is the governor general of india and he was responsible does not mean that he had responsibility or he owed responsibility to the council of ministers no in fact he enjoyed veto powers there was no accountability here responsibility means that he was supposed to enact laws on these particular subjects so please if there was some confusion it is understandable because the wording was such so i have made it clear why the confusion was there then the second statement the ministers responsible under the transferred list were elected by the legislature no they were not elected by the legislature they were nominated by the people who were all from the people who were already a part of the legislature fine they were not elected they were nominated and the third statement is blanket incorrect because never in the history as such there was principle of accountability which was enforced and that is why more and more uh, more and more uh, protests more and more movements like the non cooperation like the civil disobedience movement they came on coming because accountability was never introduced okay so here the first statement is definitely correct second is wrong third is wrong that means the first uh, option becomes correct for this one i hope you are able to catch up if the speed is quite fast or quite slow you can just drop in the comments right i am trying to be as neutral as possible and making sure that your time is being utilized in the best best possible manner because you need to value your time right now it is more than precious at this hour another feature of government of india act of 1919 was that it introduced bicameralism at the level of center right bicameralism means two houses the lower house and the upper house a very important feature was that in both these houses there was a majority there was a majority of people who were chosen by direct elections there was a majority of people who were chosen by direct elections this increased the uh, representativeness All, also the principle of direct elections direct elections i am saying where people are directly electing and uh, those elected people are coming and ruling they were that this principle was introduced for the very first time so right now we have direct elections for lok sabha we have direct elections for uh, uh, state legislative assemblies we have indirect elections for rajya sabha for the president for the vice president so bicameralism and the principle of direct elections was introduced then franchise was expanded the franchise that is the vote giving power was expanded it also created an office of high commissioner of india who used to sit in london high commissioner of india who used to sit in london so this is also correct and this is very very factual so you can get a question because factual questions are now coming up right that is there so most important is diarchy 
then it is bicameralism which is very important for you to remember and uh, then there is the expansion of franchise and also the principle of communal representation which was introduced by which act it was introduced by the morley minto reforms 1909 indian councils act of 1909 so this particular act introduced communal representation for the muslims and 1919 act it actually expanded communal representation for four categories what were the four categories there were six you need to remember this there were anglo indians you might get a question uh, on this because the reservation for anglo indians in lok sabha and the state legislative assembly has ended so you need to remember although we did not have separate electorates but we had reservation right so six anglo indians then there is indian christians indian christians and europeans fine four categories for which the communal representation has been increased so here i hope everything is clear and we'd move on to the next question now which of the following features was not a part of the government of india act of 1919 okay we have just talked about it the montagu transport reform let me read the options introduction of diarchy in the provincial government creation of a public service commission establishment of the office of high commissioner for india in london and half of the council members should have 15 years of experience in public service in india pause the video and think about the answer okay so here it's an easy question for you now because you know that diarchy was definitely introduced and this piece of information i am giving you that a public service commission would be created this was decided high commissioner officer was created but here this aspect is wrong half of the council ministers of the viceroy would be having at least 10 years of experience in public service in india okay so this is a new set of information that you need to remember moving on this is the uh, last question for the day that we have consider the following statements about the constituent assembly of india the indian independence act of 1947 established the constituent assembly that is statement 1 and the constituent assembly was responsible for drafting the indian constitution that is statement 2 read the options and let me know the answer after pausing okay so this is a very easy question you are supposed to know this question thoroughly the first statement is incorrect right the first statement is incorrect because the indian independence act did not establish the constituent assembly right it was the cabinet mission plan it was the cabinet mission plan which established the constituent assembly and you can straight away uh, reject this because constituent assembly had its first session on 9th december 1946 you should be knowing this this is basic so when it had this session how can be established it be established by indian independence act so this effectively makes three options incorrect right and uh, you are left with just one option statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct so d is the answer for this one okay very easy question among all the questions that we did today now whenever we end this session i will have certain tasks for you okay and these tasks you have to give me in the comment section and this is not for me this is for you so that you can remember right what are the tasks there are some important acts that we have not covered in this video and i want that you 
mention the brief features of those acts in the comment section okay one is the charter act of 1833 and a question from charter act 1833 was asked in prelims 2023 the most recent prelims in fact this was just the only one question that can be properly said to be from this particular topic and uh, modern history maybe isko include kar lete hain so charter act of 1833 second act is government of india act 1858 act is also called the act for good governance of india good governance of india right so here government of india act 1858 this you have to tell me in the comments what are the features for this the third act in which is very very important is government of india act 1935 okay and this in fact is the magna carta magna carta of our indian constitution major aspects of our indian constitution are based on the government of india act of 1935 so please make a detailed uh, uh, comment about this there is one more act called the uh, this uh, indian councils act yes Indian Councils Act 1909 it's also a important one the basic feature of this is separate electorate so you can also write features of this if you wish to uh, but these three are very 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 important and i want that in the comments one by one you write the um features of these acts right so now that we have discussed these particular topics for today I would like to tell you a little bit about our course that is the revise entire prelims syllabus through 3000 plus mcqs and we all know that polity is the biggest subject for our upsc examination and here you can see that through 400 plus questions we will be doing polity similarly we will be covering everything we will be covering everything that needs to be covered over here okay we'll be covering everything that needs to be covered over here and uh, when i talk about this particular course let me just tell you again yes so the model will be such that you will be getting these videos on a daily basis on our youtube channel so we'll be starting with indian polity then we'll do economy we'll do modern history we'll do geography we'll do current affairs and current affairs having such a big relevance in our upsc examination especially the location specific current affairs etc they are very important so current affairs will be there ancient and medieval history uh, the basic things that can be asked environment and ecology and science and technology so all these questions they'll be done in a very comprehensive manner by me and if you want to have a proper disciplined way of preparing for this examination the prelims part of it you can opt for this course we have tried to keep it very um, affordable for everyone to be able to afford it if you have any queries about the course please go on to this contact number please go on to our website to see more about this course and uh, you want to put your preparation in auto mode in autopilot mode that every day you will be getting questions you have to solve them then you have to watch the explanation video so you go on to uh, buy this course right if it if you think that will help you for your preparation that's all for today's video i hope you derived some value out of it i will see you all in the next one take care everyone bye bye